So at this point, all of you most likely know that we are getting two new SSR units for the half year anniversary. I recently uploaded my analysis for Dorothy, so I highly recommend that you check that out. But for today's video, we are going to take a look at the other character, and that of course is Rey. We will be going over her kit to see if she is a potentially good character for your teams, and basically talk about everything you need to know about Rey and what you can expect from her. First of all, she is a free SSR unit that you can immediately obtain after the maintenance for the next update. Additionally, you can also get more copies of her from the different events, so that means that you have one less max limit break character to worry about if you haven't gotten past the level 160 wall. Moving on, let's go over the basic stuff. Rey is of course an SSR defender from the Tetra line of units. She is also a burst type 1 and an SMG user with a water element. Rey being a defender means that she will have the same base HP as the other SSR defenders. Which if you were not aware, SSR defenders actually have the highest base HP in the game. And this is really good because a lot of her skills actually skills from HP as you will see in the next part. Her skill 1 charges your team's burst gauge by 2.47% every 60 normal attacks. Additionally, if her decoy is present, she is going to restore the decoy's HP by 2.1% of her maximum HP. Realistically, the 2.47% charge is pretty insignificant. It scales very low, considering that the value we are taking a look at is from a level 10 skill. Not to mention that it's pretty uncommon for a team to have energy problems, so this passive is not really the most useful. Now when it comes to the DK HP recovery, we can get a rough estimate of how good this is by referring to one of my SSR defenders. So at level 223, using level 0 tier 9 equipment, attraction level 1, and level 33 on the manufacturer upgrade, your SSR defender around the same level will have around 974,000 HP which comes down to roughly 20,000 HP recovered to the decoy. It's probably not the most insane ability you have seen, but in combination with their other skills, it should be good enough to keep her decoy alive for some time. Moving on, we have her skill too. It basically summons a little penguin at the beginning of the fight. The decoy will have 96% of race HP and it will be up for 240 seconds. They showed us a bit of gameplay from the JP livestream, so to let you see how it looks in the game, I will probably have that up on the screen. But essentially, it is similar to Delta's decoy where it practically acts like a shield. Which, if you think about it, Ray basically has double her HP whenever the decoy is up. As for the 240 second timer, I can't recall a stage that lasted longer than 4 minutes. So you can expect this to be permanent as long as you have enough healing for the decoy. One important thing to keep in mind is that you need to make sure that you keep the decoy alive. Because based on the skill description, it can only be summoned at the beginning of the fight. So you can no longer bring it back if it happens to get taken out in the middle of combat. For the next one, we have our burst ability. This stuns your enemies for 5 seconds, as well as giving Ray a buff that decreases incoming damage by 14.4% for 10 seconds. On top of that, if her decoy is present, it will constantly recover its HP by 2.27% of Ray's max HP every 1 second for 10 seconds. And this ability also has a 20 second cooldown. The incoming damage reduction is nice, but it's more like a last resort just to give this ability some sort of use even after your decoy gets taken out. Because for most cases, your decoy will be the one taking damage so it doesn't matter if Rey herself has the incoming damage reduction. The only time it matters is when you're fighting an enemy that happens to have a pierce effect on their attack. Or if they have other attacks that totally bypass shields, so something like the bow type boss or in PvP. After looking at her skills, it's pretty obvious that she is meant to be a tank unit. But from what I see, it looks like you need quite a lot of investment to make her more viable. And when it comes to her effectiveness for different types of content, I don't think Rey will be that good for PvE because her taunt is locked behind her burst. And if a tank unit is not able to taunt their enemies often enough, it sort of defeats their purpose. Although, I can see Rey being more viable in PvP as your first slot unit. Her DK already has quite a lot of HP, so it will let you stall your opponent for quite some time. And a good reason why you would want to stall your opponent is because your team doesn't have good energy generation. Putting Rey in your first slot will buy your character some time to enter full burst. And if you add on Biscuit, she will give Rey damage immunity for a few seconds, making it even more difficult to take her out. Outside of PvP, the only piece of content she might be a good option for is in the Tetra Tower. It just so happens that both Ray and Biscuit are in the same manufacturer type. So if you don't have a better burst 1 unit, or maybe you have one but they have a 40 second burst cooldown, then Ray is definitely a good pick. So overall, Ray is an okay unit. She is not that strong, but she is also not a character that is completely unusable. If you do want to use her, just keep in mind that you will probably need to invest quite a bit on her skills and even her equipment. Plus the fact that she is character reliant is a big factor to consider if you do decide to use her. 
because I would say that Ray without Biscuit is somewhere around high B or maybe low A tier if I'm being generous. But if you have Biscuit, Ray jumps up to S tier at least for PvP. For PvE, she is a good pick for the Tetra Tower, but aside from that, you are honestly better off using other Burst 1 units. We already have a ton of Burst 1 characters that are really good, so if you have any of the better ones, then I'd recommend that you use them instead. Not to mention that Dorothy will be releasing alongside her, so you're probably gonna use her over Ray. With that said, even though you don't end up using her in combat, you're still getting a max limit break character for free, so no complaints about that. So yeah, that's about everything I have for my Ray analysis. If anything changes, or if my thoughts about her change when I test her out, I will follow up with another video. But I'm pretty confident about this one because Ray is a pretty simple and straightforward unit. Before I let you go, I do want to mention that I will be releasing a bunch of videos within the next few days, including my review for Nihilister. So definitely make sure to leave a like and subscribe so you don't miss out on that. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.